Hey everyone, my name's Helen, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to do a little check-in because I promised during my set of videos about trying Viviscal supplements for three months that I would check in after I stopped using them. So it has now been exactly three months since I've completely stopped taking Viviscal supplements. And if you're wondering which kind, the kind that look like this, they sent me this card when I got them. They just come in this box with the pink and the white. It's not the pro line. I don't think I believe that to be something else. It's just like the regular ones that you see, you know, I'm sure at Target, I'm sure at your local drugstore you've seen them. So I tried those for three months and uh, maybe you've seen those videos and you're coming here from there or maybe you're seeing this the opposite way around and you haven't seen my results from that. In which case I will link up the videos where I ch check in at the halfway mark and then I also check in after I've completely done trying them to see um, what happens with my hairline in that case. But I will tell you right now, I got a bit of a boost, I thought definitely in my temples. And I know you probably want me to like punch in and go really close to see what happened after three months. And I promise you, I will get there. Uh, but I thought, you know, it might be worth going in just briefly into the backstory a little bit. So let's do that. So I will try and keep this backstory part kind of brief, although that will be a challenge for me because we know from my channel, I do like to chat sometimes. <laughs> okay, so I use Rogaine. That's not something that I stopped using while I was taking these vitamin supplements, whatever you wanna call them. I didn't stop using Rogaine, I kept using it because at that point I'd been using it for years and I'm still using it. And so I didn't wanna stop doing that. I just wanted to see if adding Viviscal would help me or boost my hair at all. And um, also because I was at peak hair from Rogaine, like I wasn't growing any more hair, I was just kind of, and still am at a maintenance dose. So I just didn't feel like the Rogaine was gonna figure into any growth in my temples at that point. So that's where we still are. I'm still using Rogaine. I still consider myself to be pretty much recovered from having hair loss, you know, as I've amply recorded here before. I had a lot of sort of thinning back in this area in particular. Of course, I have a huge set of videos you can go back and watch all of those, you know, um, digging into like all the different aspects of hair loss in my entire journey. Um, what else would you need to know about my hair? Uh, I am 44 years of age. I don't color my hair, so I do have some gray hair in there. I don't permit or anything like that. I have a 2A, 2B wave in my hair, and what you're looking at now, my friends, is just sort of my hair brushed out after having been washed and dried. It is not styled. There's no styling products in it or anything like that. So that is what my hair looks like. It's kind of dry right now because I have been trying. I tried Wonder Water and I tried um, the Monday shampoo, which comes in that gloriously pretty pink bottle. I didn't like either of those products. You can find out all the details why. Again, I will link up those reviews or just navigate around and search those out for yourself. And you can see what I had to say about those two products. But let me tell you, it's left me with very very dry hair right now. So I'm trying to recover from that and just planning ahead on other products I'm gonna test. So make sure that you like and subscribe because I'm gonna be testing out more products as relates to hair loss promises in terms of shampoos and stuff like that. And I'm thinking of trying Nutrafol supplements. I just wanna make sure that I get this out of my hair first, sort of just go through at least six months of having stopped Viviscal before I try any other supplements, but that might be in my future as well. So you'll want to like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of that. So I was not paid anything by Viviscal to try these supplements. This is 100% not sponsored. This is 100% I'm just saying whatever I want to say. They have not influenced me at all. They have not asked me to say anything positive and or negative about it. <laughs> uh, and this is not an ad. I did not pay for these though. They did send them to me for free. Uh, Viviscal Canada because I live here in Canada, which is interesting. Let's brings me to my next point. So in the meantime, you know, as I was making these videos and sort of going through testing the Viviscal and taking before and after photos, I also put them up on my Instagram and I tagged Viviscal and they, in the meantime, since I've made the last video where I showed my before and after, till now, Viviscal featured me on their main Instagram page. And then um, funnily enough, Viviscal in Italy also featured me on their before and after page too. So that's been kind of fun. I mean, it didn't grow my audience in the least. I, I don't think I even got one new follower from, from those mentions on Instagram, but you know, um, it's just kind of fun to see yourself on other accounts. And they did ask me for permission though, um, to use those photos. So I did give them permission. I didn't get into the whole why I stopped taking Viviscal in those posts into too deep of a detail that is recorded in my videos about those. I mean, if you really wanna know all the reasons behind why I decided to stop taking Viviscal and I will not be taking it again, you should watch those videos, but you know, 
the bottom line was I just was not happy about the ingredient profile. I just decided that was not something I wanted to keep doing long term. And I was also curious to see what would happen if I just stopped. So I do have three things that I want to tell you about what happened after I stopped and they're going to be kind of, I think they'll be interesting. We'll just hang around. I guess you'll be the judge of that. Um, and I also just want to say briefly that you know, uh, I do hear from people and it's 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 been interesting the sort of range of emotions I get when I talk about hair loss products and stuff like that. A lot of people are convinced that, you know, it's just like, oh, I colored my hair and that's why my hair looked different after I used the Viviscal and you'll see this. I mean, these are comments that are readily available to find. Okay, so that was a substantial preamble. So thank you so much for hanging in to hear me out through that. So I'm gonna talk about the three things that happened to me. The first thing that happened was that I got a pretty substantial breakout about, I'm gonna say about two months after I stopped taking Viviscal. And I think, but I'm not 100% sure, it might have to do with biotin. And here are my thoughts about that. Now, biotin is known to give people some acne, some breakouts, that sort of thing. I mean, I'd say of all the side effects I've ever heard about biotin, that is the one I hear the most. A lot of people won't take it for that reason, and that's fine too. But Viviscal has biotin in it, so hear me out. The amount of Viviscal in biotin is less than the amount that I'm taking. And so I'm gonna show you what I'm taking um, right now. But the amount in biotin is 240 micrograms, which I believe is 80% of the FDA allows. I'm going by memory, so hopefully I didn't get any of these little facts wrong. So that's, you know, whatever, 240 micrograms, right? So what I have been taking, and I've always taken, just because it's readily available, it's easy to pick up, um, and I kinda of like taking gummies, is this Nature's Bounty Hair Skin Nails with Biotin. And you know, I just picked this up at Costco. I'm actually almost done, I'm running pretty low. And this has quite a bit more. Each one of these gummies has 1,250 micrograms. That's each, and you're supposed to take it two times a day. So that's 2,500 micrograms of biotin compared to what I saw Viviscal having, which is 240. So that's a significant difference, right? So there's just a lot more biotin. Why am I taking that much biotin? Listen, I'm just following the directions. It says to take two of them. Um, something to remember though about biotin is if you're having blood work being done, and I did look this up, this is actually researched information. If you are taking biotin, you're not supposed to take it around the time like before you are going to go in for blood work because it can mess with your blood work, but definitely maybe you'll wanna check in with your lab or your doctor to double check on what that might mean for you and what you're supposed to do, um, or just research it yourself online, of course, using a good source. I will drop a good source link down below in the description box so you can read up about that. But um, apparently biotin is safe in this amount and in larger amounts. So I just, I just following the directions people. But I think that that contributed to a breakout. So I don't think it's really the vivis, stopping the Viviscal that gave me the breakout, but, but rather starting such a, because I didn't want to take this biotin plus the Viviscal biotin. I think this has happened because I just jumped up so, so high of a level in the amount of biotin I was taking. So yeah, a breakout. That happened, but it went away pretty quickly, so that was good. The next thing that happened after that, and probably the more significant thing for those of you here watching, is that I had a substantial, for me anywhere, anyway, hair shed. I had a kind of hair shedding event. Uh, it wasn't anything crazy, but it was definitely maybe four times the amount that I normally would see. And that happened about a month, three weeks to a month like I had about a week range there where I just had a lot of hair falling out, much more than I normally do. Just lots was coming out, you know, that when you wash your hair and then definitely when you use the conditioner, a lot of hair starts to stick to your hands and you just think it's not gonna stop coming out and you just have these nice, nice chunks coming out. I had some good, it felt like chunks coming out, but the net effect didn't seem to affect my hair. I can't say that all oh, my hair fell out, my, my balding spot is visible again. Nothing like that, but I just noticed a lot of hair falling out. Um, which leads me to my next point and also the temple reveal, which I know you've been waiting for. So I will show you that, I promise. So the third thing that I noticed and probably the one that <laughs> is the most significant, I suppose. I mean, hair shedding is bad and all that, but what is the actual net effect on my hair, right? So I'm gonna pin it up here. I'm gonna go a little closer and I might even, it's a kind of a dark day here, so I don't know how well you're gonna see it or not. Um, I feel like my temples do look thinner and they feel a bit thinner. And I have kind of almost wanted to resort to using some fibers. And I know that it's really hard to pick up here. Again, I will go by my window and get some better video with my iPhone. But I also noticed that this look strange little, almost like a patch right in here that I kind of never had 
before so I do feel like honestly it does look and feel a little bit thinner again I'll go and put my hair up in the uh, bun that I was using for the before and afters the sort of loose bun and I will get a little bit closer but I don't know that it's necessarily noticeable to everybody what I'm really curious though about is what this is gonna look like at the six month mark so definitely if you haven't liked and subscribed make sure that you subscribe if for nothing else so that you can see what this looks like in another three months when I will consider it to have been hopefully fairly clear from my body and because I want to start trying maybe Nutrafol and see what happens with that one. I just feel like these are thinner. I do. And they're kind of like almost like back what they used to look like. And I don't think it's because my hair fell out. I really don't know what to attribute that to. You know, I don't want to say it's so linear like I stopped Biviscale. No, my temple hair fell out or anything like that. I think that once the hair grows in, theoretically, it should stay, no? Just that boost doesn't seem to be there anymore. And I'm fine with that. I actually am not tempted at all to go back on Viviscal. Uh, it's just it's just not for me. Like I said, you can check out why. So there we are. Uh, I know that that's not very, very, very thorough, but I don't know how much you're gonna see. I don't, I don't think that the three month mark that I'm at now is the real test. I think that it's going to be at the six month mark where we can do it really good. And I'll do a much more in-depth before and after showing some tighter shots of the before and after. Um, and we can really see what's what there, but this is more just of a check-in. So just to sum it up, yeah, I just feel like my temples do look a little bit thinner and I do feel like I did have a pretty substantial hair shedding after about a month. But the good news is though that completely stopped. So I have very little hair shed right now, which is like fingers crossed it stays that way because hello, stressful, right? Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up there. I hope that this was a little bit helpful. Again, nothing drastic. I don't think we saw anything wild happen here, but um, kind of a little bit back to square one, which is kind of be kind of a little bit interesting. We will see where things are in regard to this in another three months. So in another three months, I will make the six month update. So we will see you then.